Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. Today I am bringing you a quick used bookstore haul. To provide a little context for you, there is a used bookstore where I live, but it's kind of on the opposite end of town from me, so I don't get over there too, too often. And I went a few months ago and got some great books and then was down on that side of town for a work meeting and thought I'll pop into the used bookstore, see if I can find anything. I found three great books and most of the books there usually run for like six bucks to nine bucks. But as I was checking out, they were all ringing up to like 188 or 210. And I was like very confused. And then when I was outside, I was like, oh my God, there are all of these like 75% off closing sales signs that I just like completely missed when I walked in which is like incredibly sad but I went back the next day with a bigger backpack I did get some really great books for kind of the price of one new hardcover book at least there's a silver lining in that most of this stack I have here is kind of a stack of classic authors or authors whose names I recognized on the shelves. And I guess I just have a general question for all of you, and that is, what is your approach to buying books at used bookstores? Because not all used bookstores are the same, but in my experience, when you walk in, they're separated by genre, but most of the books are just lined up in the shelf, alphabetical by last name of author. And you don't have a situation that you have in most Barnes and Nobles or bookstores that sell new books where they have display tables or books facing cover out to kind of guide your browsing and guide your buying. At a used bookstore, you don't have any of those helpful guides, which in a way is cool, but I find it challenging sometimes. And I feel like I always need to give myself a lot of time at a used bookstore to kind of read all of the names of the books and the titles. It's kind of like sifting for gold, you know, in a river or whatever, where you're trying to find the gems that will click with you in all of these titles and authors. And it makes you realize how dependent you are on those guiding forces of either seeing covers front facing or seeing staff recommendations at regular bookstores. At a used bookstore, I feel kind of like I'm adrift or lost at sea. And so I think I gravitate towards authors' last names who I recognize or classics that I kind of think, oh, I probably wanted to read that eventually someday. I feel like I kind of have to go with people that I know, and maybe that's because I don't have enough faith in kind of randomly picking a book, but that's kind of my approach at used bookstores. Let me know what your approach is to buying books at used bookstores. So the first two books I picked up were The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald and This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So I read The Great Gatsby when I was in high school and also when I was in college, but somehow have misplaced both of the copies of it that I at one point owned. There was a time when I was in high school when I really did think that F. Scott Fitzgerald was my favorite author, even though I had only read The Great Gatsby and some very small parts of The Crack Up. I think that I thought that because he writes in a pretty romantic and at times lyrical way which I really loved at the time and we have the same birthday so that might have you know influenced me a little bit. I still do really like his writing. I don't think he's my favorite author anymore and I haven't read enough of him to really make that determination anyway but I like him a lot and you know, when you can get some F. Scott Fitzgerald for two bucks a pop, why not? The next book I picked up was another sort of it's only two dollars, why not own a copy of it? And that's Ulysses by James Joyce. That's kind of a dangerous way to buy books, right? I did read parts of this when I was in college. If I ever mention reading parts of a book on this channel, I am most certainly referring to something that I was supposed to read in its entirety in college, but didn't have time to because that's just how college goes, at least for me. So I took a modernism class when I was a freshman and was kind of overwhelmed by it. And I was supposed to read this whole book. I read parts of it didn't really appreciate it fully, I would say. Has anyone out there read all of Ulysses? What do you think about it? I feel like I kind of have a bias against it where I think of it as sort of like a earlier version of Infinite Jest, that book that sits on everyone's shelves and they don't actually read it, but it's kind of like for their literary cred. Let me know your thoughts about this if you have any. Next up, I have The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James in one of these kind of old cloth bound editions of the book. This is a modern library one. I've never read any Henry James and I have to say my knowledge of him and his work is pretty abysmal. I'm definitely familiar with his name. I'm familiar with this title, but I somehow completely 
missed the boat on Henry James. The reason that I got interested in reading him was that I was reading some Edith Wharton and kind of read a little bit about the friendship that they developed later in his life and the letters that they wrote to each other. So that's why I wanted to pick up one of his books. Speaking of Edith Wharton, the next book that I picked up was The Custom of the Country. I have read The Age of Innocence, which I really enjoyed, and The House of Mirth, which I love. I've been meaning to read more Edith Wharton, especially because I have like a huge massive biography up there of her that I want to read eventually. But I had never heard of this title before. I don't know if that's just me, but apparently this tells the sort of age-old story of a Midwestern girl who comes to New York City to try and make it big in the big city, and her name is Undine Sprague, and um, apparently she's kind of this really fascinating complex and interesting anti-heroine. I think that'll be really interesting to read about. Edith Wharton in general is just fantastic and I really recommend her. Then I picked up They Came Like Swallows by William Maxwell. William Maxwell was a writer in the 20th century and he was also the fiction editor at The New Yorker for 40 years and I don't think he's as widely known as a fiction writer himself but from what I understand he's kind of a real writer's writer and was highly respected among other writers. This book was published in 1937 and follows a Midwestern family in Illinois living in a small town that's being affected by the 1918 Spanish influenza. Then I found a copy of The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. And I'm currently reading Middlemarch and really liking it, and I've heard that this is a really excellent Eliot book as well. And what's really cool about this one is that it's actually from 1928 and it's property of the Board of Education in the city of New York. It is specifically a school edition of The Mill on the Floss, so it has this kind of funny little preface where it's talking about why they've printed this school edition of The Mill on the Floss, and it says, the only excuse for a school edition of The Mill on the Floss is its neglected merits. All students of George Eliot recognize that the first half of The Mill on the Floss constitutes the best spiritual biography of the author's early life. I think that that's like such a like, gem of a find. The next one was another fantastic find, but maybe only for me and my, um, specific niche interests, but it is Stars in Their Courses, The Gettysburg Campaign by Shelby Foote. So if you have watched Ken Burns' Civil War documentary, you might recognize Mr. Shelby Foote, who is a pretty famous, famous historian of the Civil War and wrote kind of his magnum opus, The Civil War History in three volumes. And this is an extract of that famous, famous work that covers the Gettysburg battle. I took a class on the Civil War in college and my mom also is really interested in the Civil War. So then we did a little summer road trip where we drove from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania down to Savannah, Georgia, and we hit up a bunch of famous Civil War landmarks and battlefields and kind of did that whole thing. So we spent a whole day at Gettysburg and I learned a lot about it, but I'm sure I could learn more from Shelby Foote because he is the expert of experts. And the last book that I found, I may have given away with the thumbnail of this video, but it was by far the best thing I found. It is this old copy of Long Day's Journey in Tonight by Eugene. Jean O'Neill. I read this play when I was in high school and I absolutely loved it. I still have my high school copy of it, which is small and it's pretty dog-eared and covered in highlights. So when I saw this, I was like, oh my god, what a great find. This is a really cool jacket that's obviously quite fragile, like almost falling apart, but it features this picture of Eugene O'Neill on the cover. So much of this play was kind of about his life. Ugh, and when you see a picture of him on the cover, it just really hits you where it hurts. I love this play. I've never seen it staged, but I just remember finding it so moving. It's just a heartbreaking book that like, ugh. But I love it, and I want to end by reading you one of my favorite passages from this play. So if you're not interested, feel free to leave now. But if you want to stick around, here is a rather gutting monologue from the younger son, Edmund Tyrone. I couldn't see but a few feet ahead. I didn't meet a soul. Everything looked and sounded unreal. Nothing was what it is. 
That's what I wanted, to be alone with myself in another world where truth is untrue and life can hide from itself. Out beyond the harbor, where the road runs along the beach, I even lost the feeling of being on land. The fog and the sea seemed to be part of each other. It was like walking on the bottom of the sea, as if I had drowned long ago. As if I was a ghost belonging to the fog, and the fog was the ghost of the sea. It felt damned peaceful to be nothing more than a ghost within a ghost. That is so good. This play is fantastic. That's all I have for you for my used bookstore haul. If you have thoughts on any of the books I mentioned, please leave them in the comments below. Or if you have thoughts on used bookstores in general, how you shop at used bookstores, or if you have a story about the best thing that you ever found at a used bookstore, please let me know in the comments. I'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.